Good afternoon. This is Akashwani and I'm Anujak Kumar with the Mitte News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds round table with CEOs of leading US tech companies in New York, urges them to foster collaborations across various sectors. Campaigning for second phase of assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir to end this evening. Watching child pornography in private is crime under POXO Act says Supreme Court. Anura Kumar Adisanaike of National People's Power takes oaths as the ninth president of Sri Lanka. And Kiran Rao directed Lapata Ladies is India's official entry for Oscars 2025. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that the 21st century is technology driven and there is a need to balance technology with democratic values for the human welfare. The Prime Minister said this during his interaction with tech industry leaders in New York in a round table anchored by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology School of Engineering. PM Modi added that technology without democratic values creates an environment for crisis and India is a country which has talent democracy and market shayad hi jeevan ka koi kshetra aisa hoga jisko ab technology drive na karti ho lekin aise samay mein technology plus democracy iska ek santulan bahut zaruri hai kyunki democratic values aur technology ka milna manav kalyan ki guarantee deta hai ek vishwas paida karta hai एंड टेक्नोलॉजी माइनस डेमोक्रेसी किसी भी संकट के लिए एक वातावरण पैदा कर देता है और भारत एक देश है जिसके पास टैलेंट भी है डेमोक्रेसी भी है मार्केट भी है Addressing the industry leaders, PM Modi said that he always sees them as fellow travelers and co-partners in the development journey of a self-reliant and strong India. He expressed confidence that together tech companies from India and America will play an important role in solving global challenges. PM Modi added that when the world's largest democracy grows rapidly, it also assures global peace and prosperity. He said the Indian government has made investments worth 15 billion dollars in the semiconductor industry and India is also receiving huge investments from all over the world in this sector. सेमीकंडक्टर के दुनिया में हम जो पॉलिसी लाए हैं उसको बहुत ही स्वागत हो रहा है करीब करीब सभी इस क्षेत्र के लोग भारत में आने की दिशा में आकर्षित हो रहे हैं और उसके लिए जो बेसिक नीड्स की जरूरत है उसमें हम पूरी तरह तैयार हैं चाहे पॉलिसी की बात हो वहां पर आवश्यक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की बात हो सेंट्रल और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का सहयोग हो इन सभी चीजों में हम साथ में हैं The Prime Minister highlighted the economic transformation happening in India particularly in electronics and information technology manufacturing semiconductors biotech and green development he also dwelt on India's bio e3 policy to develop India into a biotech powerhouse the attending ceos expressed their strong interest in investing and collaborating with india the ceos who attended the meeting include Chairman, President and CEO of Adobe, Mr. Shantanu Narayan, Google CEO, Mr. Sundar Pichai, IBM CEO, Mr. Arvind Krishna, Accenture CEO, Ms. Julie Sweet, among others. Talking to media after meeting PM Modi, Accenture CEO Julie Sweet said she is very excited that many other companies like Accenture continue to grow their business in India. I was honored to meet with Prime Minister Modi and to hear more about his leadership and vision for the next decade after having such a great decade really making India such an important part of the global technology landscape. I was also very excited to hear about the commitment of so many other companies like Accenture to continue to grow our business in India and to have our individuals in India serve the globe. Google CEO Sundar Pichai said that Google is robustly investing in AI in India and looking forward to doing more in the future. Now the Prime Minister has been focused on transforming India with his digital India vision. He pushed us to continue making in India, designing in India. Uh, we are proud to now make our Pixel phones manufactured in India. He is really thinking about how AI can transform India in a way that benefits the people of India. And we are proud to be partnering with India. We are robustly investing in AI in India and we look forward to doing more. We have more from our correspondent. 
On the second day of his visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi packed an action-filled day. PM delivered a historic address, Nasa Kalusiam, in Long Island, attended by over 15,000 people. Prime Minister hailed the Indian-American community for their unmatched skills and talent and called them India's strongest brand ambassadors. Prime Minister also gave the pushful acronym for making India a developed nation. He highlighted India's growing stature in the world and announced plans to open two new Indian consulates in the U.S. Later, Prime Minister interacted with tech leaders in New York in a roundtable anchored by MIT School of Engineering. This was followed by PM's back-to-back -back bilateral engagements with PM of Nepal, Crown Prince of Kuwait and Palestinian President. With Prime Minister of Nepal, Mr. K.P. Sharma Oli, PM Modi reviewed the unique and close bilateral relationship and expressed satisfaction at the progress made in diverse sectors. In his meeting with Crown Prince of Kuwait, PM Modi noted with satisfaction that the two countries were supporting each other with energy and food security requirements. In his meeting with President of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, PM Modi expressed deep concern at the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Gaza and the deteriorating security situation in the region. He affirmed India's unwavering support to the people of Palestine from New York, Himani Rana for Akashwani News. Later tonight, Prime Minister Modi will speak at the Summit of the Future at the United Nations General Assembly focused on multilateral solutions for a better tomorrow. The campaigning for the second phase of Assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir will end this evening. 26 Assembly constituencies spread over five districts of the Union Territory will go to polls in this phase on the 25th of this month. These districts are Riyasi, Rajauri and Poonch in Jammu region and Srinagar and Badgam in the Kashmir Valley. 11 Assembly segments of Rajauri, Poonch and Riyasi districts of the Jammu Division will go to polls on Wednesday. Jammu and Kashmir Assembly elections are being conducted in three phases. The counting of votes will take place on 8th of October. In Haryana, the single-phase assembly elections will be held on the 5th of next month. In our series of constituency profiles, today we bring you the update from Dabwali Assembly Constituency. A report. The Bali Assembly constituency was a reserved seat from 1967 to 2005 and in the year 2009 it became a journal seat situated at the border of Haryana and Punjab. It falls under Sissa Lok Sabha constituency. The ancestral village of former Chief Minister of Haryana Chaudhary Devi Lal Chotala is a part of this constituency. This time Chaudhary Devi Lal's grandson Aditya Chotala is contesting the election after leaving the BJP and joining Indian National Lok Dal. On the other hand Janayak Janta Party has made Digvijay Chotala its candidate as Tikvijay is also the great grandson of Chaudhary Devi Lal. The uncle and the nephew are face to face on this seat. Kuldeep Gardana from Amadni Party, Amit Sihag from Congress, Baldev Singh from Bharatiya Janata Party, Kulbir Singh from People's Party of India and Dhanaram Azad from Bharatiya Shakti Chetna are other contestants. Akanksha Saxena, Akashwani News, Chandigarh. An election commission of India team led by Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar reached Ranchi on a two-day visit to Jharkhand to review the preparations for the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Meeting of election commission with the representatives of political parties is underway in Ranchi. Representatives of six national parties including BJP, Congress and CPIM and three regional parties JMM, RJD and AJSU are giving their views and submitting representatives presentation ahead of the assembly elections in the state. The government is offloading onions in the wholesale market to reduce the prices of the bulbs. Addressing a press conference in New Delhi, Secretary Department of Consumer Affairs Nidhi Khare said there is sufficient quantity of onion in the buffer stock and the sowing of onion in the Kharif season has been good. She said government is keeping a close eye on the prices of onions. This is Akash Vani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. The Supreme Court has held that watching pornography involving children in private is violation of the POXO Act and asked all courts across the country to not use the term child pornography in any judicial order or judgment. The Apex Court gave these directions today while setting aside a decision of the Madras High Court which had held that watching of adult videos involving children would not fall within the scope of the protection of children from sexual offences 
or POCSO Act. The court also said that the parliament should seriously consider substituting the term and in the meantime, the union government may bring an ordinance to amend the POCSO. The Central Bureau of Investigation or CBI is interrogating TMC MLA Nirmal Ghosh from Panihati, North 24 Parganas, in connection with the rape and murder case at R.G. Carr Medical College and Hospital. He was summoned to visit the Central Investigation Agency's office at CGO Complex today. Ghosh was reportedly seen in front of the morgue on 9th of August 2024 morning. Union Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Dr. L. Murugan has said that the central government had announced various measures for the development of the fishing community. In an interaction with the media at Tuttukori today, he said that the government had allocated rupees 17 crores for installing 1 lakh GPS equipment for fishing boats in Tamil Nadu. He said that the government is taking measures to rescue the fishermen from Sri Lankan prisons. Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana has completed six years today. On this day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had launched the scheme from Ranchi in Jharkhand in 2018. Our correspondent takes a look at the scheme. In the last six years, around 8 crore beneficiaries have availed cashless treatment and over 1,7,000 crore rupees have been spent by the government on it. Under the scheme, a total of 29,648 hospitals, including around 13,000 private hospitals, have been empaneled. The scheme is being implemented in 33 states and union territories, excluding Delhi, Orissa and West Bengal. Recently, the Modi government has extended the benefits of this scheme to senior citizens of 70 years and ever irrespective of their economic status. This is expected to benefit nearly 6 crore senior citizens. The main aim of the scheme is to provide universal health care to the poor, needy and the vulnerable sections of the society. With Dipendra Kumar, Anupam Mish, Akashwani News, Delhi. National People's Power Leader Anura Kumar Adisanaike was sworn in as the ninth Executive President of Sri Lanka today. The swearing-in ceremony took place at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. 55-year-old Mr. Adisanaike's victory comes after a closely contested election against Opposition Leader Sajit Premadasa. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Anura Adisanaike on his victory in the Sri Lankan presidential elections. Domestic benchmark indices were trading in positive territory in today's afternoon session amid strong global queues. Meanwhile, Sensex touched a new high of 84,882, while Nifty hit a record high of 25,926 in the early trade today. BSE Sensex was trading up to 40 points or 0.2% to 84,785 and Nifty 50 was at 25,898 with a rise of 107 points or 0.4% when reports last came in. Filmmaker Kiran Rao's comedy drama Lapata Ladies has been chosen and submitted as India's official entry for the Oscars 2025 in the Best Foreign Film category. The Film Federation of India has confirmed this, adding that the 13-member select committee headed by Assamese director Janu Barwa unanimously decided on the film produced by Amir Khan and Rao. The India Meteorological Department IMD has forecast very heavy to extremely heavy rainfall over coastal and north interior Karnataka, Maharashtra and Goa during the next three days. Heavy rainfall is also likely over central, east and northeast India during the next four days. The weather office has also predicted heavy rainfall over Kerala, Gujarat, Goa, Madhya Maharashtra, coastal Andhra Pradesh, Rayal Seema, Telangana, south interior Karnataka till tomorrow. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds a roundtable with CEOs of leading U.S. tech companies in New York, urges them to foster collaborations across various sectors. Campaigning for second phase of assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir to end this evening. Watching child pornography in private is crime, under FOXO Act, says Supreme Court. Anura Kumar Adisanaike of National People's Power takes oath as the ninth president of Sri Lanka. And Kiran Rao directed Lapata Ladies is India's official entry for Oscars 2025. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsoneir.gov.in and News on EIR app. And with that, we end the midday news.